You know, guys, things have just been getting pretty crazy these last couple of weeks. Inflation's not coming down, interest rates are staying up, and the world at large is getting pretty turbulent. All in all, there's just a lot of different stuff happening at once, and while it's had a pretty substantial impact on share prices, it still didn't stop me from just having my highest day of dividend income ever. That is right, my friends. A couple days ago, I received four dividend payments, which when added together, represent the most amount of income I've ever received in a single day. And in this video, we're gonna go through each of those payments, all of which came from some of the highest yielding stocks in my portfolio. So we'll take a look at all that, and I'll also show you how I reinvested these dividends. I went on a pretty nice shopping spree. But before we get into any of that, I wanna hear from you. What's the most amount that you've ever made in a single day from dividends? Let me know in the comments below. All right, my friends, now as we can see, this first payment here came from Main Street Capital Corporation, which is one of the monthly payers in my portfolio. And this month, Main paid me $13.50. And throughout all of the craziness we've seen in the market these last couple of weeks, Main Street has actually held up pretty well. If we take a look at the share price performance over here on Seeking Alpha, in the last month, there's been a little bit of a dip here, nothing too crazy. And overall, Main is still up 1.5% uh, just in the last 30 days. But if we zoom out looking at the year-to-day performance, once again, they're still doing a really well. So far in 2024, Main Street is up almost 9% and looking at the performance over the last year, it's even better. In the last 365 days, Main Street has seen a climb of over 20%. And it's not all that surprising to see Main Street Capital Corporation doing well right now, as opposed to other types of businesses like real estate investment trusts, business development companies like Main Street actually thrive in higher interest rate environments. BDCs make their money by investing in or loaning money to middle market companies. And typically these loans are floating rate loans, which means they go up and go down with interest rates. So in a high interest rate environment, the interest rates on the loans they've made will increase, which generates more income for the company. And one thing you'll see is when these BDCs generate more money, they'll end up distributing more money to shareholders in the form of dividends. As we can see here in the case of Main Street Capital Corporation, not only have they been able to increase their regular monthly dividend, but for the last couple of years, they've paid out special dividends too, which we can see have also increased over the years. So they've done a fantastic job of lining the pockets of their shareholders. And I've certainly been a beneficiary of that. If we take a look at my Main Street position over here on my dividend portfolio tracking spreadsheet, which you can start using for free, there is a link to download this spreadsheet in the description of the video. Here we can see I have about 56 and a quarter shares of Main Street Capital Corporation at an average cost of $40.66, which is about $6 below the current share price, which means I'm up about 15% in terms of share price, but if we include dividends in the calculation, I'm up more like 30%, which is is very solid. And moving on to the second payment I received, this one came from the other monthly paying dividend stock in my portfolio. We're talking about Realty Income, who paid me $25.74 for the month. So with these two payments combined, we're looking at close to $40, not too shabby. Now, as opposed to Main Street Capital Corporation, Realty Income has not held up very well. If we take a look at the share price performance, we can see that Realty Income is down about 2% in the last month. So they've seen a slight drop there, but a much bigger drop here if we look at the year-to-day performance here in 2020. 24, realty income is down about 10%. And if we zoom out once more, looking at the performance over the last year, they are down 16.6%. So quite a big drop all across the board. But having said that, as you guys know, when the share price goes down, the dividend yield goes up. So this drop in share price has left the forward dividend yield for realty income in a really great spot. Right now, we can see that realty income's forward yield is sitting just a hair below 6%, which is pretty sweet in its own right. But this is also 1.3% above the company's four-year average yield. So by buying it right now at this discounted share price, you're able to get a much nicer cash flow return than on average over the last few years. At any rate, guys, taking a look at my realty income position here, I'm seeing a little bit of a loss. I have 100 shares of the monthly dividend company, and my average cost is about $44.5. So right now, the current share price is about three bucks below that, which means my position is down about 6% in terms of share price, but is still up almost 2%, including dividends on a total return basis. And fun fact, if we scroll over a little bit more, Realty income is actually my portfolio's highest income generator. And every single year, this one position alone is bringing in over $300 in dividends, which is pretty sweet. And 
now moving on to this third payment, guys. This one came from WP Carey, one of the other real estate investment trusts in my portfolio. And for this quarter, WP Carey paid me $32.96, our biggest payment so far. And with these three payments combined so far, we're looking at about $70 of dividend income just for the day, which is really solid. And out of all three of these companies, WP Carey has actually seen the biggest drop. Back over here on Seeking Alpha, we can see that in the last 30 days, WP Carey has seen a pretty steep decline, actually, down 4.3% which leaves them with a year-to-date loss, which is pretty insane at 17.7%. And looking at the performance over the last year, they're also seeing the biggest drop here. They're down 24%. And like with Realty Income, guys, with this drop in share price, we're seeing a forward yield that's a bit above the four-year average, not to the same degree as Realty Income, but still, we'll take that higher cash flow return. The forward yield is at 6.4%. The four-year average yield is at 5.9%. So there's a bit of a spread there. And looking at the rest of the dividend stats, one thing you'll notice here is that WP Carey does have a negative five-year growth rate. And this is because they actually did reduce their dividends somewhat recently. It was a whole to-do, but this happened back in September and came as a result of their office property spinoff. So they reduced it a little bit because of that, but actually just last month, they did announce a slight raise by a hair, only 0.6%, which is pretty much nothing. So hopefully we'll see larger dividend increases from here on out. We'll see what happens. At any rate, guys, looking at my position, I'm actually seeing quite a decent loss with WP Carry. I have 38.1 shares. This is not a huge position for me, but the shares that I do have are down quite a bit. My average cost is $65.74 against the current share price, which is about you know $12.5 below that. So right now I'm seeing a loss of just about 19% in terms of share price. And thank goodness for dividends because those are shaving those losses by about 11%. And including dividends in the calculation, I'm down 7.74%. But either way, WP Carry is definitely one of the worst performing positions in my portfolio right now. Now guys, this brings us to the fourth and final payment that I received. This one came from Blue Owl Capital Corporation, who is also a business development company. And because of that, they too benefit from this higher interest rate environment. And as a result, the share price has done pretty well. In the last month, Blue Owl is still up 1%, so we'll take that. Looking at the year-to-date performance, they're also seeing a gain here. They're up 4.6%. And if we zoom out over the last year, they've seen a really nice gain. They're up 20.5%. And Blue Owl is actually the highest yielding stock in my portfolio. We can see that yield is looking juicy at 9.67%. And like Main Street Capital Corporation, Blue Owl has also paid out special dividends to shareholders these last couple of years, in addition to increasing the regular dividend. So with this company, shareholders as of late have been able to benefit from both an extremely high dividend yield. So you're getting that nice cash flow as well as share price appreciation. And this has certainly been the case for my position. I have 116.4 shares of Blue Owl Capital Corporation at an average cost of $13.49. We can see the current share price is about a couple dollars above that. So right now I'm seeing a 13.8% gain in terms of share price and a near 40% total return if we include dividends in the calculation. That's just unreal. But anyway, guys, with this blue owl payment, which was for $43.07, the highest out of the bunch, this is gonna bring the grand total for the day to $115.27, which once again is my biggest day of dividend income ever. This is the most I've ever received. And this is why I love dividend investing, guys. Even when share prices are going down and there's so much uncertainty in the market and in the world, those dividends still keep coming in. And I don't know about you, but this brings me comfort as an investor. And I feel like I'm better able to endure these tough times knowing that dividend paycheck will still come in. And also knowing that I can use that to take advantage of the volatility in the market. Now, don't get me wrong. It still stings to see the value of your assets going down. I'm certainly feeling this myself, but for dividend investors, there's a bright side to every downside. And there's nothing better than being able to buy dividend stocks at a discount, which is exactly what I did with all of these dividends that I just received. One of the things I did was buy some more Starbucks while they are sitting at their 52 week loads, the best time to buy. And I picked up one and a half shares at an average cost of $85.18, which is considerably below my cost basis. So this is a good opportunity to average down, which leaves me with 52.12 shares of Starbucks at an average cost of $90.71. So right now I'm still seeing a little bit of a loss. I'm probably gonna continue buying Starbucks 
bucks and we'll see if I can get that average cost below $90 per share. Along with that, I also added to Johnson & Johnson, which is also really coming down in share price. I bought 0.9 shares at $145.91, which is also considerably below my cost basis. So this is also a good opportunity to average down. And this purchase leaves me with 33.2 shares of J&J. &J. My average cost is still just a hair above $160. And I also wanna continue adding to this position. And I think by doing so, I'll definitely be able to get my average cost below that $160 mark. The current share price is $145.35. So every additional purchase is definitely gonna bring that average cost down. Anyway, guys, from reinvesting these dividends and from making these purchases this week, I was actually able to hit a pretty cool little dividend income milestone in the portfolio. Taking a look at my dividend income breakdown here, we can see that I'm officially over $2,600 of annual dividend income, which is cool. That's not the milestone though. The milestone is I'm now bringing in over $50 every single week, which I feel like is pretty big. And at this point, if I wanted to, these dividends could actually pay for some really cool real life things like a tank of gas, or they could pay for my groceries every week, or I could take my fiance out on a hot date to Juan's Flame and Fajitas. When I zoom out and look at the big picture, you know, I really haven't been doing this for very long. I've only been investing for about four years now. And in this next video right over here, I'm showing you exactly how much money I've made with dividend investing so far since I started. We're gonna take a look at all of my income so far from the start of my investing journey until today. And we'll also take a look into the future to see how this income will continue to grow over the next couple of decades, which is gonna be pretty mind blowing. So click right over here to check that out and I'll see you in the next one.